Persona 5 Strikers had to sell the idea of a Dynasty Warriors inspired Persona spin off with a brand new real time battle system. And while to most that sounds like an amazing game, and yes, please, I will take two copies, the real appeal of a Persona game isn't really its combat. There is a lot of story in these games, so needless to say, Strikers needed an interesting new dungeon and a captivating first antagonist to really hook you into its world and story. And well, I will assume that everyone here was able to read the title to figure out that yeah, it's interesting. Also, there's gonna be some major spoilers for the first Jail and Strikers, but anything following that I will be totally quiet about, I promise. I will not say anything else and I will be a good little boy and just just shut up and uh, and make this video and just... Yeah... Persona 5 Strikers begins with the old crew coming back together to go on summer vacation, months after the events of the original story's conclusion. And whilst at first everything seems fine and you're having a good old time with the old gang, Alice Hiragi quickly gets thrown into the story and the metaverse calls upon the gang once again, as their goal becomes to enter jails, which is what the new dungeons are called in Strikers. Alice Hiragi is a way different antagonist than any of the previous Persona 5 villains, quickly making her a distinct, fresh character. And even though she's introduced as merely an evil fashion designer turned monarch, which is what the rulers of these jails are called, we learn more of Alice's backstory later, and she makes me feel something so rare and unusual for a video game character. You know, sympathy? Ugh. So no, I don't like her just because, well, you know. But when I saw the Arisi reference in her boss fight, she could steal my desires anytime, any place, please. The very first jail is nothing unique. We have seen castles before, not only in Persona 5, but also in other Persona games. But the theme of Alice in Wonderland combined with the amusement park aesthetic makes for an interesting backdrop for the story at play. The jail spans the entire area of Shibuya, making the streets and alleyways that we play through in the original Persona 5 accessible and explorable to some degree. It was really fun seeing Shibuya from a different angle, you know, the metaverse's perspective, and it's quite a clever way to make something brand new feel similar enough to intrigue the original Persona 5 fans. The Orcs in Strikers puts one character from your party in a relatable position to the jail's monarch, and is the main party member that this jail focuses on developing as a character built up in Persona 5 relates to Alice, and as such, Two of the best girls in Strikers gets their time in the spotlight. Beautiful eyes. If you guys think you're gonna knock me down or make me fail, do you know, do you, do you know who you're dealing with? Do you really know? Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? Alright, so you might be wondering what makes this part of the game so good. Well, I think it's time to talk about story. We are here to stop Alice, whom in the eyes of the public portrays an image of a cute, charismatic idol. However, in reality, the reason that people are going crazy for her is because she is exploiting an app called Emma to steal the desires of the people so she can mesmerize all of Shibuya. However, a different side of Alice is being shown behind the scenes as it reveals a completely different person. She will snap and psychologically bully any man she knows to be in their stable relationship in by changing their heart so they could break up their marriage and go for her instead. If anyone tries to stop her, she will physically attack them by stomping on them, humiliating them and god damn girl where can I sign up? The reason that Alice is not a standard boring Persona 5 antagonist is because in Strikers, the game takes time to build up the monarchs, as all the characters have gone through some psychological trauma which the Phantom Thieves obviously can relate and sympathize with. I have up to this point in the video only called Alice an antagonist and not a villain, and this is because, well, Alice is not evil. In reality, she's just a depressed young woman that has incredibly low self-esteem. This is because the girls at her former school, Shujin Academy, bullied her because some popular boy confessed his love to her. Because of her past trauma, Alice tries to hide this time in her life and all mentions of her school vanquished from the internet. Before she went into the fashion world, she used to be highly introverted and nothing was like the Alice that we saw in-game. This trauma was the cause of a personality shift during the events of the game, as she became not so different from the same people that had previously bullied her. Her traumatic past is exemplified in her views of Anne, who she immediately views as a bully similar to the ones that tormented her, when in reality we know that Anne was also a social outcast and completely lacked any aggressive impulses in school. Alice does not view herself as a bad person and frankly she isn't. 
Alice Hiragi is only someone trying to survive and avoid becoming a target for bullying again. When defeated, even her shadow recognizes that nothing that she did improved her view of herself, and that she was wrong to follow the example of her bullies. I think that Alice is a great first antagonist, only trying to do her best, which is the common silver lining with all of Striker's antagonists. This first jail establishes Striker's theme in a strong way, and when more people start to finish the actual game, I might even return to it, for my usual thematic breakdowns of course. But that would be for the future, and well, if Persona games taught me one thing, it's to live in the present and enjoy the time that I have. So for now, have a good one. Showtime! Wapo! Here!